Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So what is it you're thankful for this Thanksgiving? On the spur of the moment, maybe you can't think of a whole lot. Then again, maybe you've put some thought into it and you've already got a long list. Well, did you think about your body and soul, your eyes and ears and all your members, your reason and all your senses? How about your clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land and animals? As Luther writes in his small catechism, for all of these things it is our duty to thank and praise God. But tonight, I'd like to actually turn the tables. And I'm wondering if you have ever done something for someone who showed absolutely no appreciation at all. Most of us have probably been in that situation. And if you have, my bet is that you are disappointed, if not a little upset. Well, the same thing happened to our Lord in our Gospel reading for tonight. In the Luke story tonight, we hear of ten men, all of them leprous, who were miraculously healed. But only one of them came back to Jesus to give thanks and praise. Jesus asks him with just a little bit of disappointment in his voice, where are the other nine? Well, how often are you and I just like those other nine? Forgiving, forgetting to say thank you for the wonderful gifts that we have received from God. Well, tonight, especially tonight, it is fitting for us to remember and to give thanks and praise to God for all of his wonderful gifts. Well, as we look at our text for this evening, the nine lepers who did not return to give thanks Make no mistake, they did have faith in Jesus. Each and every one of them cried out, saying, Master, have mercy on us. This was a prayer for salvation. It was a cry that encompassed all of their needs, not just the physical need to be healed from their leprosy, but also their spiritual need to be forgiven. It was a cry for them to be reunited with their communities, with their families, and their friends. All ten lepers knew exactly what they needed, and all ten knew Jesus was their only hope. Well, Jesus responded to their cry, and he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. Jesus sent the ten lepers to the one place where they could be declared clean and reunited with their families and their friends. So as the ten went, there is no doubt that they believed in Jesus. With evidence of leprosy still visible upon their skin, still they left to go show themselves to the priests. And on the way, all ten of them were cleansed. Imagine for a moment, if you had received Such a miraculous gift. Like you, no doubt, all of the ten lepers rejoiced and were happy with the gift they had received. But there was only one of them who remembered who it was who had healed him. Only one of them, a Samaritan, a foreigner, saw the God of creation at work in his life. This one leper saw God in the person of Jesus Christ and returned to give thanks and praise to God. He rejoiced not only in the forgiveness of his sins, but also in the physical healing that allowed him to reunite with his community. He was now reconciled to God, forgiven, and given a new life, a second chance. The Samaritan's prayer was fully answered. And in response to the man's cry of thanksgiving, 
Jesus responded by saying, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The salvation the Samaritan had prayed for was fully his. Well, on this Thanksgiving, many people will give thanks for their material blessings. Even people who normally have very little, if anything, to do with God will invoke his name tomorrow and say thank you. But once that Thanksgiving is over, I wonder if they will continue to think of God and to thank him. They might remember him during some personal or family or maybe even a national crisis. But then again, even during those times, they may not. And in truth, even you and I, at times, we find ourselves weak when it comes to giving God thanks and praise. In truth, we are far better askers than we are thankers. Oh God, please perform this miracle for me. Heal my brother or my sister. Smooth things out. Defend us from our enemies. Give us peace. Make us happy. Far too often we ask for our daily bread, but then we forget to thank God for that bread when it comes to us day in and day out. And we do have so many reasons to be thankful. Consider again the ten lepers from our Gospel reading. Jesus healed all ten of them from an incurable disease, but only the Samaritan recognized the healer behind the healing. Only the foreigner recognized the giver behind the gift. He believed not only that God had healed him, but also that this God was incarnate in Jesus Christ. The foreigner believed and returned to give thanks and praise, and his thanksgiving then naturally flowed out into his worship. Well, Jesus may not have healed any of us from leprosy, but he has healed us from something much, much greater. Jesus died for us on the cross to deliver us from the diseases of sin and death and the devil. You and I, who suffer from the mortal disease of sin, we have all been healed. In the waters of holy baptism, the forgiveness of Jesus Christ was given to each and every one of us as a gift. God has called us by name. He has chosen us as his sons and his daughters. And he has healed us. That's more than enough reason for us to thank and praise God. Well, that thanks and that praise, it flows out naturally in our worship. Tonight, we gather around God's Word and sacrament. We gather at this Thanksgiving because the President at one time issued a proclamation for all Americans to do so in their houses of worship. We're thankful to have this time to thank God for his good and gracious gifts to us. We thank him for a good government. And as St. Paul told Timothy, we offer our supplications, our prayers, our intercessions, and our thanksgiving for all people, for kings and all who are in positions of authority, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So what is it that you are thankful for tonight? In truth, there is far too much for us to count. All our material blessings, the privilege of having been made children of the one true God, living in a nation with freedom, the rule of law, and the ability to worship our God in safety and security. These are all good gifts that we have received and that we continue to enjoy every day. Just as God healed the ten lepers, he continues to give good gifts to both the thankful and the unthankful. But as the Samaritan returned to give thanks and praise, tonight we too 
praise God for the faith that enables us to thank him for all of his blessings. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. We give thanks not only today and tomorrow, but every day as we journey through this life as recipients of God's good and gracious gifts. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.